we're continuing with DNA replication and we're just going to take a step back now since this is the continuation the second part uh, of the process so what what do we have happening we have double-stranded DNA uh, two strands held together with hydrogen bonds we have the enzyme helicase breaking the bonds we have topoisomerase working ahead preventing supercoiling we have single strand binding proteins coming in keeping the strands apart and we have a enzyme called primase creating little RNA primers that are going to provide three prime OHNs. And we'll put one let's say here. Put one in there. H. Put another one in here. So the, the ends are actually really important, 3 prime, 5 prime, that sort of thing. Now we said DNA polymerase can come in, and we're going to get talk now here about leading and lagging strands. So the DNA polymerase can come in, and it can work from this 3 prime OH, and it can start to build new DNA. Okay, so T, G, G, T, C, and so forth. Okay, so this is our new... DNA strand, right? So a single strand is being made from this template strand by DNA polymerase, and it's using the primer to build. Now, the overall direction of replication is in this direction. So it's going to be moving this way. The helicase is pulling the two strands apart. So the polymerase is now following along behind it, building the new DNA. So remember, DNA is built building the new DNA in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That's a phosphate to hydroxyl direction. And remember, what is that referring to? You should know the structure of a nucleotide. Okay, so there are five sugars. Okay, this is the one carbon, two, three, four in this corner here, and five, the fifth carbon sticks out of the ring. The number three prime carbon is the hydroxyl group, and to the five prime carbon is the phosphate functional group. At the one is where we have our nitrogenous base, which is the A, the T, the G, or the C. Okay, so what we're talking about is that at the five prime, the phosphate's sticking off it. At the three prime, this OH is sticking off it, and it's building in this direction, so it's adding more nucleotides in this direction. That's the only way it works, it's the only way it builds. And so for this strand, as replication works, the polymerase just keeps moving and moving and moving, and it's building new DNA continuously. So we have what's called continuous replication, and we call that the leading strand. Okay, so that, that's what happens. Now, our problem is, if you remember that the strands, these two strands of DNA, the template strands that were pulled apart run anti-parallel to one another. Right? So this is a three prime end here. So anti-parallel new DNA is going five prime to three prime. So that makes sense. It's reading it three to five. That's the way it reads. That works. So up here, now on the other strand, we are going to get replication as well. So there's another DNA polymerase. Now, the problem is going to be that when the DNA polymerase comes in here, you know it, it can build DNA following the exact same rules. So it can build it from this OH group, from this primer. That's a primer there. And it can add in the new DNA in a five prime to three prime direction. That's the only way in which it works. But you can see it's kind of, it's working now, what looks like it's in the opposite direction. So it's the opposite physical direction. All the rules are the same, so it's technically reading DNA and making DNA in the same direction, but because the strands are anti-parallel, the two polymerases are going opposite one another. And so at first it would seem like, okay, so that, that's just what happens. One moves this way, one moves that way. But our problem is, and why we have what we call a lagging strand, is that these two polymerases are connected. So there's a, there's a lot we're going into. There's a lot of terms, there are a lot of enzymes, and there's a lot of details. However, 
there's also a lot that I'm leaving out. There's a lot more to the process. There are a lot of other proteins. There's a lot of additional things happening. So this is really still considered an introduction to this process, right? Uh, and not the full detailed process uh, that would be available in, in a higher level cell molecular biology course. So, but what we, we do need to recognize just to even get the terms, right? Or that these two polymerases are connected and now the direction of replication is this direction. So for this particular polymerase, there's no problem. It just reads, it makes it, it's continuous, there's a single primer, and that's it. For this other polymerase, there's a huge problem because it needs to be working in this direction, yet it's going to be pulled or moved backwards. So what's it going to do? Well, what's going to happen is it's going to keep detaching. It's going to stop, disconnect, reconnect, then work and build a short segment of DNA. So this short segment of new DNA uh, actually has a special term for it. It's called an Okazaki fragment. It was built five prime to three prime, but it was part of what we call a start stop replication. So for lagging strand, instead of continuous replication, we have what's called discontinuous, or what I'll call start, stop, start, replication. It's going to start, then it's going to stop, then it's going to start again, then it's going to stop, then it's going to start again, stop, and so forth. It's just going to keep making little pieces of DNA. All right, so it's what we call discontinuous. It's not just starting and continuing uh, all the way through. It's going to just keep making these little pieces, these little Okazaki fragments uh, that we call it. So this is the difference between leading and lagging strand. Because the DNA structure, which this is why learning the structure is so important to get the details of this process down, uh, it makes a lot less sense to you if you don't really know the structure, if you're not familiar with just individual nucleotides, if you're not familiar with the double-stranded DNA structure, if you're not familiar with those things, then it makes learning some of this pretty much impossible, at least to understand any of it. So you really have to get that part first. And if you don't get it, then you need to go back and watch and, and go review previous lectures that go over structure. Right? But once you have a fair handle on the structure, you could kind of sketch a nucleotide yourself, you could put the strands together, then we start to get into the process. Diving into the process and getting all these details and all these names, it just isn't going to work. You're not going to really learn anything at all um, unless you know the, the basics of the structure first. Okay? So you have to focus on that. So the new DNA is being made. The single strand of DNA is being manufactured along the template strand. And so like I kind of drew some of these in here, it's always going to be saying, okay, that's a, an A, I need to put in a T, that's a C, I got to put in a G, an A, an A, and so forth. And you're going to end up then with new double-stranded DNA. When this strand is done, you're going to end up with new double-stranded DNA. There's still some other things that are going to have to happen because obviously we have some problems. We have primers in here that are pieces of RNA, but, but that's the basic idea. So we said we're going to start off with double-stranded DNA. Right? We have two strands of DNA. The two strands get split like this. This is sort of the super generic you know, version of it. Right? And then new DNA is made along each of these strands. Right? And so then we end up with two new double-stranded DNAs. And that's kind of what would be happening here. Now, this is overly simplistic. You can see now this is the next level of detail, adding in some, some of the, the enzymes and some of the more um, specific processes that happen. So but that but that's not going to be finished, right? That's that's replication in general. The DNA polymerase is going to be working and now making the new DNA. The thing is, once that DNA has been made, like I said, the process isn't done. We have at least, at least one other thing that needs to happen, but there's going to be a few more. The one thing that we can recognize immediately that has to happen 
is that we have a problem with the primers. Right? They shouldn't, I'm gonna erase some of this just so I have some more room to, to write now. So they have to be removed. We have a process right now to look at, which we're not gonna get into again in, in a lot of detail, uh, but it's called proofreading. So there's an enzyme, which is another DNA polymerase that after this process is done, it's going to go back through and it's gonna read the, new, the double-stranded DNA. And what it's gonna be doing is it's gonna be checking along. So if you have the double-stranded DNA, and this is one strand, and you have the other strand of DNA, go and oops. now what's going to happen is this new DNA polymerase this proofreading enzyme is going to look at each of these base pairs it's going to say a and T that's correct and it's going to move on and read the next one T a that's correct it's going to move on it's going to come over here and say C and C wait a second two C's that that doesn't happen they're not supposed to be like that C is supposed to pair with G right so this was a mistake the enzyme, the DNA polymerase, will then cut out that nucleotide. So this is the proofreading enzyme. So there's an enzyme. Oh, the proofreading enzyme. It's going to go through and cut out that nucleotide. And then it's going to say, yeah, yeah, this was supposed to be a G here. So I'm going to add in the, the G nucleotide. Uh, in place of it. And it's going to keep working and reading nucleotide by nucleotide. The same thing's going to happen when it hits the, the RNAs. It's going to say, whoa, wait a second, this RNA, that's not even right. That That's not even the right kind of nucleotide. So it doesn't even matter what the nitrogenous base is here. Uh, it's going to pull those out. And so then the proofreading is then going to replace all the RNA primers. It's going to cut them all out and replace them all with proper DNA. Okay, so you'll get DNA nucleotides, you know, all the way through. So you'll have two new fully DNA double strands. And that's what the proofreading enzyme is going to do. Now, a part of continuing what the proofreading enzyme is going to do and linking it up with this very last thing that we're going to look at uh, is with something called ligase. When I did this little drawing here, you could see I, I intentionally I intentionally didn't connect this part right there. And that's because, again, we have to draw the, the structure again, come back, coming back. So like I said, you have to know the structure of the nucleotides, of the DNA, of a single strand, of a, you know, the double strand. If you don't know the structure, then studying these processes um, well, I'll actually give it give it a letter here. Um, this is going to be very difficult, very difficult for you to do. So let's say, for example, uh, this T was incorrect. It, it wasn't supposed to be there. Instead, it was supposed to be uh, a G. So the proofreading enzyme would come in and it would remove this whole nucleotide. So proofreading would cut out uh, the mistaken nucleotide. So let's say that's a mistake. This is just an example. And what's supposed to be there, let's say in this particular example, is a, a G nucleotide. So what it will do is it will then bring in the new nucleotide with a G, and it will be a triphosphate, a nucleoside triphosphate. And then it will break the bonds, sever the bonds here, breaking off those two phosphates, using that energy to make the new phosphodiester bond. And so it makes this new bond. And that's what the proofreading enzyme does. Now, you can see there's still this problem, an issue down here, which is kind of like what I drew up there in a simplified form. Here's a single phosphate. Here's the OH group. That's the part of the nucleotide structure. But I didn't draw the bond there. And that's because when the proofreading enzyme worked, it created this one bond but it didn't make this bond. It only made one of the two bonds that it needs to join a nucleotide into that strand. 
So there is a break or a gap. So every place, say, where the, the primer was taken out and replaced with the DNA, there's actually a break or a gap in the new DNA. So they're not joined together. That's the gap I'm talking about. So now we have fragments of DNA, not actually a whole continuous piece. And that's where this last enzyme comes in. Okay. So what we're going to have is an enzyme called DNA ligase. Right. So um, after the proofreading enzyme comes in an enzyme called ligase. So the ligase enzyme will come in and it will bring with it energy in the form of ATP and it will simply be able to make this bond. So we're not going to go into necessarily the whole detail, the reaction and the, the bond formation and everything. Like we said, this is still an introduction with terminology, even though it, it looks sometimes a little more complicated than that. Um, we're certain pieces of information we, we kind of have enough right here to look at. So the ligase, we just have to say that's an enzyme. It comes in here. It Sometimes we say it called it seals the gaps or it bridges the gaps. It, it actually makes the phosphodiester bonds that make that new DNA whole right, and puts them together. And that would be the end of it. Okay, that would be the end of the replication process. Now, what do you actually have you know, here at the end? So when the whole process is over with, you have these two new double-stranded DNAs. And so we're going to be heading into now the next material. Right? And the next material we're going to get into is uh, kind of like we're, right, where we started this uh, with cell division. So we said the, the purpose of kind of looking at DNA replication or even in asking the question as to, you know, why does a cell um, duplicate its DNA? What's the reason for DNA replication? It's so that the cell can divide into two new cells. So it has to double its DNA. So each of these cells has the same amount of DNA. Now, when we look at the process of mitosis, often we look at these chromosomes under a microscope. And we'll you do that in a laboratory. And often when you see pictures and photographs and a book and other places of a chromosome, you usually see this, something that looks a little bit like this, uh, so this X-looking structure. You say, well, that's a chromosome. And that's technically, that's not a chromosome, right? That's really two chromosomes. But in our case, more technically, we're going to call them sister chromatids. And that's an important term that we're going to get into now in the next material with mitosis. The sister chromatids are the new double-stranded DNA. So when this process, as you can kind of look at it sideways like this, when you look at this process, what has been manufactured is the two strands have been pulled apart, a new strand's been built along each of them, and those two new strands are these identical chromosomes which when the process is ended, they don't completely separate. They're actually held together by protein. And they're called sister chromatids. It is during the mitosis process that they will finally be separated. So, so in some ways, this process still isn't complete because what we've done is we've replicated the DNA and formed the sister chromatids. And now we'll have to enter into the mitotic phase where the sister chromatids can actually be separated. Right? So these two processes are, are really connected and interwoven in this way. And this is kind of a, a little look ahead as an example of how they're connected. So just make sure that what you can do is um, draw a replication fork, be able to kind of sketch some of the different enzymes and proteins that are associated with it, label them right, where they kind of lay out in the process, and then also be able to list in order the which they would work. So if you have double-stranded DNA, DNA polymerase doesn't come in and start making new DNA because the strands are held together. You have to break them apart. So helicase would have to come in first, right? You have to have the primers before the DNA polymerase could work. You have to have primase come in. So the order in which these enzymes and proteins are associated with the process is also very important. So make sure you know kind of what they are, where they go, where they fit in, and what order in which they work. Right? And if you have that, then you have the, the, a good handle on an overview of uh, DNA replication. All right, now, so next we'll move into uh, mitosis.